I brought it closer to you so you don't have to lean too far. That's a pretty good, pretty good statement about who we are and where we are this morning. In God's presence, 
in God's glory. It looks about the same, but we're getting closer to Christmas and we're starting to remember how love invaded our world dressed like one of us. So we'll be walking about around that from some different angles as we continue our worship toward Christmas Day. In case you haven't seen, seen the details, we will worship together at 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve, which is Saturday. And at 9.30 on Christmas Day. And we'll be on Christmas Eve, we'll be talking, thinking about the night before, the morning after. And on Christmas Day, we'll be thinking about the morning after the night before. And maybe we'll get our, get our heads around that, that whole experience as we come at it from those different angles. But look forward to sharing that with you next week. Couple of couple of things, um, other details. You may have noticed that some of the folks who are concerned with public health are suggesting that we ought to be wearing masks in public places. And we just wanted to remind you that our policy about that is that you make the call. If, if, if your health is such that you feel more comfortable wearing a mask, please do. If <clears throat> we need to adjust some seating down the road somewhere, um, let us know and we'll, and we'll see how we might do that. Um, as I've said practically from the beginning of this pandemic, how we manage all that is just one way we follow the half of Jesus' great commandment that says, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Deb Adler has, has a word for us and she's going to use her big teacher voice You know what, Deb? The big te the helicopter is using its big teacher voice right now. Let's wait just a sec. Can you tell us very briefly about just one of those mission projects? Thank you. Well, this morning, I don't know where, where you've been all week, but <clears throat> I've had a week that was not at all what I'd envisioned. And there, there were times when I thought I knew exactly how it was going to go today, and it wasn't even close. One of those weeks. 
Sometimes it felt like that ancient curse, may you live in interesting times, it landed right on top of me. So it wasn't as I predicted, it wasn't as I planned. I suspect that was where Joseph and Mary found themselves as they got caught in God's plan. And so as we're, as we're together this morning thinking about that part of our story, look for yourself in there. See if you can find yourselves somewhere in, in that part of the story as we reflect on how, how God works in our lives, sometimes exactly in the way we've requested, sometimes in the way we never wanted, and now on this side of it, would never trade. The minors are going to help us light our the younger minds are going to help us light our Advent wreath this morning. Okay. Excuse me. Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know sure of ourselves, God wants us to experience God's presence. Even when we think we can handle life on our own, God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel from the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. We light the candles of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep everlasting joy, and today a presence that speaks of love as a sign. No matter of, of our circumstances, we know we are not alone. God is with us. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. The howling storms of doubt and fear us sin. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Promises I now praise the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on. Standing, 
Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing on the promises of God. Please join me in our opening prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come into our midst. Come into our hearts. Come into our homes, our community, our schools, our workplaces. May we welcome you everywhere. Give us wisdom and vision to make room for you. Prepare for you. Anticipate your arrival with holy joy. Shine your light into those nooks and crannies we keep in the shadows. Sweep the cobwebs from our long hidden doubts and fear our torn and wounded places. We long for your arrival. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Our first Bible reading this morning is from Isaiah 7, 10 through 17. God spoke again to Ahaz. This time he said, Ask for a sign from your God. Ask anything. Be extravagant. Ask for the moon. But Ahaz said, I'd never do that. I'd never make demands like that on God. So Isaiah told him, then listen to this. Government of David, it's bad enough that you make people tired with your pious, timid hypocrisies. But now you're making God tired. So the master is going to give you a sign anyway. Watch for this. A girl who is presently a virgin will get pregnant. She'll bear a son and name him Emmanuel, God with us. By the time the child is 12 years old, able to make moral decisions, the threat of war will be over. Relax. Those two kings that have you so worried will be out of the picture. But also, be warned. God will bring on you and your people and your government, a judgment worse than anything since the time the kingdom split. When Ephraim left Judah, the king of Assyria is coming. second reading is from Matthew 1, 18 through 25. The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before they enjoyed their, their wedding night, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. 
Joseph, chagrined but noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure a way out, he had a dream. God's angel spoke in the dream. Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth, and when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus. God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. This would bring the prophet's embryonic revelation to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel, Hebrew for God is with us. Then Joseph woke up. He did exactly what God's angels commanded in the dream. He married Mary, but he did not consummate the marriage until she had the baby, and he named the baby Jesus. What's in a name? Our identity. Which of these churches' identities invite you, and which trigger your flight response? Let's do a little poll. If, the, if a church's name invites you, and you, you want to go, go and, and worship there next Sunday, raise your right hand. If it triggers your flight response, raise your left hand. Potluck assembly. Church of the Big P.A. Aha. Bill Gates Memorial Geek Orthodox. Okay. The Clean Bathroom Bible Temple. <laughs> the two or more, but sometimes less depending on who shows up, Bible Church. Yeah, you could help them out. Feel Good Fellowship. And <clears throat> the Twist and Shout Revival Center. Well, not many of us ready to twist and shout because we might not get untwisted. You may remember how Shakespeare told a story about two families. They'd been bitter enemies, sometimes even deadly enemies, for generations. Once upon a time, Juliet Capulet and Romeo Montague fell madly in love. And their relationship blossomed until both families discovered it and forbid their marriage. Their love was doomed from the start because of their names. So what's their name? Oh, I'm supposed to be using this. What's in a name? Who we are and where we've come from is wrapped up in our names. My wife, Diana, is named for her great aunt, Anna. Her name contains those two ends instead of just one, as you'd probably spell Diana if you just heard it. So, her name is often misspelled. My name is Michael William, and it shows up in our son's middle names, David, Michael, and Paul William. Our daughter's middle name is Diana's family name, Lee. Her name is Karen Lee. We thought about naming her Sarah, you're right, we didn't feel like we wanted everyone to, to, to call her Cupcake. <laughs> a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago now, we hosted an exchange student from Iceland. We're still in touch to her, with her, and that's been a really good thing. Thuri helped us understand that nation's naming system. It's called a patronymic 
naming system, which means everything starts with the father. The father's first name becomes the first part of the child's last name. Thury's father was Yarter. Her full name was Thuridur, Yart's daughter. Her mother was Kristen Richard's daughter. From, from Iceland, we're going to go backwards to Palestine about 800 years before Jesus' birth. The kingdom of Judah was under constant threats from neighboring kingdoms. King Ahaz's army was getting worn down from repelling repeated foreign invasions. The country was perpetually in crisis mode. King Ahaz wondered sometimes quietly and sometimes very loudly, is the Lord among us or not? Is God with us in the midst of this impossibly hopeless situation? Is the Lord among us in our doubt, disaster, and depression? Is the Lord among us through our constant busyness, confusion, and chaotic change? Through never having quite enough time and energy and always behind, being behind and playing catch up? He had, had his doubts like most of us do from time to time. And he sought constant reassurance for his shaky faith. It was like he always had to be some, have somebody there propping him up. And one day, God called his bluff, as we heard, through the prophet Isaiah. He has got the message. Ask God for a sign. Ask anything. Ask the moon. Be extravagant. I'd never do that. He has replied, of course not, your highness. Your prayer might be answered. You might get what you ask for. That will be far more than you wanted because you'd discover in full the greatness and God goodness of our mighty God. This God, this great God, demands our total trust. He is, you'll have to go all in and set an example for your people. You're the leader after all. Now the prophet assured King Ahaz that these troublesome enemies would eventually fail. And if that's the case, your highness, let's have no more. We're too weak. We can't do it. What kind of leadership is that? You didn't want to sign, but God's given you this special, very ordinary sign because you need it. The sign is the birth of a baby. Every birth is profoundly ordinary and profoundly extraordinary. This particular life, this particular person is a unique revelation of God's image in human flesh. Not perfectly, but we can see the image of God in every human being, no matter how scratched or scuffed up it's gotten. Watch for the birth of a very special child, your highness. A child whose mother has named him Emmanuel. So for the next 800 years, faithful Jews still watched and hoped for this very special baby. They were still watching in the time of Jesus. Some unique circumstances surrounded his birth, but he grew into a normal childhood, child with a normal childhood. And then God called him to that world-changing three-year public ministry. And the community began to form around Jesus. They, they formed around what he'd begun and, 
and his promise of a new world and new creation. That community continued what he begun and his dismal ending led to the growth of God's endless new beginning. It spread and continues to spread to the ends of the earth. And Matthew's gospel tries to put all these pieces together. He's writing for communities of Jewish Christians. So they're familiar with, with what we've heard already. Matthew shows us a young couple engaged to be married. And engagement back then was a long process. And it was a strictly binding legal contract. Fairly early in that process, Mary became pregnant. That was a deal breaker. We're not told how she gave Joseph the news. That scene was, was cut out before the final cut. Did she tell him about her experience with the, with the angel? How did Joseph receive her story? Was he quiet and thoughtful? Did he ask helpful questions? Did, she want, did he wonder what she'd been drinking? Did he lose his temper? Demand to know who, who was the father? Call her names, abuse her? Did he believe Mary, but worry that no one else would? According to Jewish law, Mary had not only broken their marriage contract, she had smashed it to smithereens. And Joseph was the injured party. He had two options. He could publicly announce her unfaithfulness and end her relationship. And that would have led to a very public punishment. Mary would have been stoned to death and Joseph would have been the one to throw the first of many stones. His other option was to end their engagement privately and quietly. Joseph chose the second option, Matthew says, so Mary would not be disgraced. Then one day an angel appeared to Joseph. The angel confirms Mary's story. Her pregnancy is indeed spirit conceived. Joseph is to name the baby Jesus, which means, as we heard, God saves. And then Matthew connects the dot with Isaiah's prophecy, which names the baby Emmanuel, God with us. So what's this baby's name? Jesus, Emmanuel, all of the above. Nothing less will do. Jesus, God saves, equals Emmanuel, God with us, God really with us, just as we are, for better or worse, through all our ups and downs, through the best and the worst, all the in-betweens, through the ordinary, the extraordinary, and all of life's dailiness. Also through those once-in-a-lifetime moments. God with us in all we do and say and are. Whether we're aware of that presence at that moment or not. God's presence makes every human being created in God's image a sacred sight. How dare we treat that person so badly if he or she bears the image of the living God? How dare we cultivate selective blindness to disturbing, demeaning, 
disgraceful acts and their victims. How dare we drive down the street and see that homeless community out there or that person with that piece of cardboard in the middle of busy traffic where they're liable to become a hood ornament and not see them. God with us makes every choice and interaction a sacred moment. How can we do the best for all involved right here, right now? How and when do I step up, lead, take a risk? And how and when am I called to be last of all and servant of all? To do the work supposedly beneath me. The work no one wants to do. To take none of the credit and in taking no credit help make a meaningful difference. What does it mean to represent God with us with persons in grief? near death. Folks who've had their foundation shaken, sometimes literally, by natural disaster, war, terrorism, or just bad luck. Emmanuel, God with us, means none of God's children ever be lost and alone, need ever be lost and alone again. Jesus, God saves means the presence of pure love in every corner of creation and every aspect of life will heal our brokenness, restore our fractured relationships, make our spirits new and whole. Our vision of God's with God with us looks like Jesus, not just the precious baby. It looks like the man he grew into, the one who had time for all those folks the religious leaders had labeled unclean, the one who taught us to love enemies. The one who had unconditional love flowing through him. The one who managed to love everyone from those self-righteous religious leaders to the people their oppressive legalism labeled junk. Emmanuel, God is with us. Really with us, as one of my colleagues put it. God is with us just when we, we're, we know we're all alone. God is with us when we've gone where we know God would never go, never have us go. Gone so far, we may never find our way back. God is with us when everything's working well in life and when nothing's working. God is with us when everybody's with us and when we're just out there, far away from home, far away from loved ones, far away from whatever gives us comfort and strength. Jesus, God saves. Well, that's interesting. I had some struggles this week with uh, my computer and with finding a printer that would happen. And I don't have all the right pieces here. <laughs> but you can see where we're going. We're going toward this great celebration great celebration of Jesus, of God with us. One of the traditions in our, in our family is, has been a, a birthday cake for Jesus. And uh, 
even though some of the grandchildren are, all, are almost too old for that, it still keeps showing up. One of the things we've never done is it's never had any decoration on it. It's, it's pretty nice cake. Sometimes it's a tres leches cake, if, if Diana's ambitious. But it's never had any, any decorations on it. But I have a feeling that if some of you were to, <clears throat> to do that birthday party, some of you may even be gifted decorators. And you can put stuff on it. You could put a you could put a cross on it, or you could put a little manger scene, or Joseph and Mary and a donkey and a baby. That's a lot of candles. <laughs> That's a four alarm fire. <laughs> Sometimes we'd let the youngest child do that. But if we were going to put names on, we need to put both of those names. Jesus, God saves, and Emmanuel, God is with us. Because the presence of God in our lives, in our communities, on our planet, in all of creation, the presence of God is pure, raw, powerful, divine love. And that pure love, beyond what most of us dare to love most of the time, is the healing love that can heal the brokenness in our lives, our families, our communities, our churches, including the 2,000, by the way, that have left the United Methodist Church since the difficulties in 2019 that that led to the formation of the Global Methodist Church, including all those fractures and can heal even the brokenness in creation. That's how much love we celebrate every time we say, Emmanuel, God with us, to heal our brokenness make us whole and involve us and invite us to help build God's new creation. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, we are grateful for your presence among us. You are not unreachable, unreachable, hidden in some faraway cloud. We celebrate your bold choice to share with us the blur and mystery of our lives. You are with us amid our lists, our rush, our busyness. Your joy fills our lives as a song, as the light of a candle, as a card from a friend. All the ways we connect in this season proclaim signs of your presence. We turn to you in this Advent season. Fill us, we pray, with joy, healing, blessing, and hope. Let something wonderful begin, something surprising and holy. Let your hand be upon us. Let your love fill us. Let your joy overwhelm us. Fulfill our longing for you, Emmanuel. Greet us as we welcome you soon on a holy night. Amen. As Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
will deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Advent promises light and love are coming to our world. Advent promises that our waiting will one day lead us to welcome the Prince of Peace. Advent stirs within us the expectation that the best is yet to be. Let us offer our gifts with thanksgiving and joy so that we may bring the light of Advent into another's dark world. Amen. <laughs> don't seem to be as dark as usual the stars seem brighter than they've been before deep within I feel my soul a stirring as though my hope has been restored protected well from Herod's anger as our father's son and the son of man love is raining down on the world tonight there's a presence here I can tell God is in us God is for Gracious God, we thank you for this season of carols and gifts and for your most precious gift of Jesus. We offer you our lives and these gifts, our hopes and our plans, our work and our play. May love and justice blossom from the gifts we bring in his blessed name. Amen.
soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we are going to see the king no more crying men we are going to see the king no more crying men we are going to see the king no more crying men we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah going to see the king no more dying there we are going to see the king no more dying there we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we are going to see the king soon and very soon come on soon go out to welcome the king who comes to us looking most unkinglike in a small vulnerable infant with nothing to give and everything to need go and invite your neighbors to come and welcome the coming king your neighbors who seek love, hope, peace, joy, and wholeness. It's all coming with the King who is coming soon. And love is the sign of its coming. Go in the peace and power of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and the Spirit who is pure love energy. Amen. Soon and very soon, we are going.